Hey guys, it's Table Talk! <laughs> huh? That's what you've been watching, if you weren't sure, and you're blind and can't read the title of this video. This that. is a show where we read your comments because you use the hashtag Table Talk on Twitter, mm -hmm. and we found those comments, and we cut them up and put them in this bowl, and we're gonna randomly pick them and talk about them. Uh, but today we have a special guest. Who yeah, is it? Matt Mercer. You may know him as the DM from Critical Role on uh, Geek and Sundry. That when, when does that one go live? You've it's, changed the time recently. Uh, no, it's it's always been seven? it's a Thursday at seven p.m. Pacific time on their Twitch channel. There you go. And only That's on Twitch cool. and YouTube can you find that one, I believe. Indeed, indeed. Um, now, being a DM as a fellow DM, it's mm -hmm. probably one of the harder and more underappreciated jobs out there. That it is, and I'm hoping to try and change that a little bit. Uh, both for giving people an idea of how the game functions for people who don't have an opportunity to play before, don't really know how it works, but you know, uh, try and dispel that fear a lot of people have of thinking it's too much work or you know, it isn't as much fun as being a player. I completely disagree, so it's been fun to try and disprove that. Uh, well, don't play or hate. Uh, don't hate the player, hate the game. Uh, and <laughs> well, like the game as well, because it's pretty fun. But yeah. mod, we're playing a heavily modified version of D&D &D when we play it, right? Like a modified version. Heavily modified. Uh, but you guys play like the legit, like, they're too legit to, the to crit. Rules <laughs> oh, yeah. See, that's, that's the other tattoo we're getting. It's the oh, pizza yeah? butt and then the. And then too legit to crit. Critical yeah. role. Oh, too legit yeah. to yeah. crit. No, I, I, but that's what kind of so cool about the systems is you can scale it back. You know, you don't have to play the entire rule set to enjoy it. In fact, I still modify things on my own to be a little more streamlined to allow better storytelling. Because if you just play. And some people like to just play Diablo style and just kill, shit, take. Stuff you know. Isn't there an aspect to it? Because like as a, as a performer slash host type person, like mm -hmm. sometimes I really enjoy these games, but I'd like to kind of enjoy them with my friends without the intrusion of a camera. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Because then you have to like you always have that thing in the back of your mind where you're like, oh shit, is this on. entertaining? Yeah. Uh, shit, this isn't entertaining. Ah, uh, fart joke. Yeah, that, that that was our biggest you know? worry when we started our stream because we played for two years privately before we began playing Critical Role uh, on Twitch, and so we we're hoping it wouldn't make that much of a difference. And thankfully, because we already had our dynamic going and we didn't have a live audience, just cameras set in there, we got comfortable pretty quickly and it wasn't a That's huge cool. variation for us. You know what, and that, there is something to be said about if you're enjoying yourselves, then they, the audience will enjoy yeah. with you. So, mm -hmm. Well, the best part a... about Critical Role is that they're all voice actors. So That's when cool. they're in character, you know, you you become your characters, and I yeah. think that that just adds that next level in sort of sto storytelling and role playing. Well, well, we have to have a, some sort of focus for our psychosis, you know, have to give the voices some way out, or we end up doing terrible things. I'd love to have a lactating uh, uh, man character. <laughs> That's Is his that ability. Possible? Roll a d20, see if he's squirting yeah. his eye. I'm sure you he could, could homebrew that for you pretty quickly. Yeah, maybe you could like, your milk could like put bad people to sleep, like enemies to sleep. There you go, it's, like, a lactomancer. Milk. Yeah, there you go, <laughs> boom. It's now a it's thing. Going, it's going, <laughs> I have to go in the Dungeon Master Guild soon, guys. You heard it here first, the lactomancer class coming up. Or necro milker, how about that? No, that, like that's a answer. whole different thing. <laughs> Necro milk are your powdered that, milk. That's not like you go to the dead bodies and you draw yeah, the milk from them. Milk. That's a whole gross. that's a whole different thing. Uh, it's gross. <laughs> You're also doing a separate series which is kind of like how to be a better DM or how to be a DM in the first place. What are mm -hmm. some of the things that you cover in that? Because I've watched them and I was taking notes. Oh cool, cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, Terrain um, was we, one. Oh there you go. Mm -hmm. We've done a we've done a, a short video series, we're hoping to do more in the near future, called GM Tips. And that goes for not just Dungeons and Dragons, but other role playing games out there and general uh, ideas on how to simplify or or, or not be too scared and intimidated by the idea of creating your own world or being mm. handed a, a module and going, play this, and going, uh, you know. So it's just uh, little hints and tips, uh, examples on how things can function and simplify your world building and hopefully trying to you know, make you feel comfortable in that space and know that part of the game is not knowing what you're doing. That's like yeah. a large part of it, even as a dungeon master. You Isn't just that, uh... hide it. That's life, isn't it? Well, that happened. Our life is not knowing. What very you're first doing. episode of the Sourcefed D and D, I had a whole story planned out, and then all of a sudden, one of the characters, Brotha, played by Matt, said one thing. Heard of him. And uh, it actually threw up the threw off my entire campaign, oh, and shit. you just see this fear flick in my eye, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> Let's work with this, and I had to make it up on the spot. But that's you know the fun of playing the game. Yeah, that's I, a thrill. Yeah, I have to ask you, sir. Have you ever LARPed? You done any live action role? I have before? once back in two thousand and one. Mm -hmm. It was Vampire the Masquerade. Wow! Oh yeah! Uh, and it was with a whole like Simi Valley chapter of theater kids that were running this large game, and oh, I was kind of thrown in the middle of it without much preparation or knowledge of what I was getting into, and it freaked me out to be honest. Yeah. 
and I'm kind of sad because like if, knowing what I know now and having a little more preparation, it would have been a lot of fun. But I kind of just showed up going, uh, what, I, I don't, <laughs> what's, uh, don't look at me. <laughs> um, but uh, you I know, were too nervous to fully enjoy yourself at the time. Yeah, yeah. If, if I can go back now, and like I, I have friends who do LARPs and. I'm kind of scared of it because I know I'd enjoy it too much. Yeah. I have so little free time now as it is that if I got really into it, I would just stop producing anything and live in the woods hitting things with foam. I would consider it sort of like a nerd's way of like getting physical activity and going outside. There is like, that. You know, and I, I, wanna, I want that in the in the positive side of LARPing. Like, you know, everybody has to find their way. Like a lot of people go out and play basketball on the weekends or pro frisbee or what is it? What's the frisbee that they play where it's like ultimate very intense? Frisbee? Ultimate frisbee, yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, rock that scuba! Why, why can't that be as normal as like LARPing? Because people die in LARPing. They do, all the yeah. time. Yeah. All right, you want to pick a topic, man? <laughs> Get sure. in there. Sure, let's see what, yeah. let's see what we got Guess here in the bucket choice. of bad ideas. <laughs> all right. Uh, did your parents read to you as a kid? Oh. Do you plan on doing the same with any current or future children? Uh, yeah, I, my parents read to me as a kid. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. loved it. I love story time. Um, I don't want to have any kids ever. Uh, I'm gonna have Maude run over my genitals with her car <laughs> later uh, to yes. ensure that that won't happen. <laughs> Thank She'll get you. pleasure out of it, and I will <laughs> be so happy. All this time, you just been waiting. <laughs> finally, <laughs> yeah. Just think of all your ex boyfriends while you do it. It'll be fine. Oh, uh, but I will read stories to my dogs. How about that? There you go. I can read some tales to the pups. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like uh, like <laughs> exactly. That's a good one. Yeah. What about uh, you? I hate storytelling. <laughs> no, uh, no, no. I'm kidding. No, I, I, no. They did. My, my parents and my grandmother specifically. She read me Lord of the Rings when I was a very, very young kid. Oh shit, that's and, cool, man. And it got me heavily into like Piers Anthony and other like early fantasy yeah. novelists. Um, but yeah, my, my parents and grandmother read a lot to me, and I will definitely do the same if. If ever I have children, they will be so sick of me reading to them because it's what I do. That's <laughs> adorable, damn it. I grew up with this show in Australia called Play School. It's Play School. And it's, you know, for zero to sort of five year olds. I watched it till I was 10. But what they did, they would do is they would read a story and they would, when reading the story, hold the book out to the camera mm -hmm. while reading and flick the pages. So when I was seven years old and I would read all my books outwards. Mm -hmm. As if I was oh, the that's, host, that's cute. and I would read it, yeah, Aww. like that. That's, cute. <laughs> that's adorable. There was a uh, beloved uh, TV show personality, uh, Bill Cosby. He did this show <laughs> called Picture Pages. You guys remember that? I, Can we uh, yeah. get to a clip of Picture we... Pages? Oh dear. It's time to watch Bill Cosby do a picture page with you. I don't think we got that much in Australia. Are we we had play school. You know, Picture Pages. You see, took the pages <laughs> and I flipped them over so you can you see the stories. Pages. You <laughs> see, yeah, no, I, yeah, that happened. I remember that show. There's yeah. a lot, there's a lot, a lot of wonderful shows I like get. You remember that later on in life, you have more context for the people behind it. And you're yeah. like, oh, wow, they were. You know what? I always yeah. thought, I always thought was so strange was uh, there's this show called Shining Time Station that was the. Um, Thomas the Tank Engine okay, okay, yeah, show yeah, yeah. on PBS, and two, uh, the conductor was played by two very famous people. Uh, one of the Beatles. Yeah, Ringo was the conductor at one point. Oh, no, I thought he was, was the, George Carlin, was the narrator. And George Carlin, George Carlin yeah. yeah. And George yeah. Carlin was another one, and that was so strange to me because every once in a while I'd be like flipping through the channels <laughs> as a kid. And he this and, and yeah, and I, w I love George Carlin as a kid, still love George Carlin, but I mean, he's the, one of the filthiest Stand comedians yeah. ever. And uh, you see him going like, oh, here comes Thomas the Tank Engine coming into the train station. And you're like, this is terrifying and strange. <laughs> My favorite like, edit. This is a total paycheck for this guy. Someone did an edit of Thomas the Tank Engine where they kind of adultified um, the dialogue, so every time they were trying to say the fat controller, they would cut it and re-edit the fat contr- the <laughs> Then what are we supposed to call the fat con- the fat con- the fat controller? <laughs> the, fat con the fat controller! <laughs> that's great. Love it. And that's how you make, um, yeah, and I was saying controller is this, you know, because I'm a lady. Anyway, you know what to do with that. You can launch that topic. Oh yeah, launch that motherfucker. Let's see if we can get this. Right in the lens. And while you're launching that, here's a fun story about Ma Master and I. Um, a little too hard on that one. I got you on as a guest for the, a Star Wars podcast that I was doing at the time. Yeah, yeah. And it was freaking me out because I was playing a lot of Shadows of Mordor. And of course you voiced many orcs. Oh yes. In that video <laughs> oh, game. Oh, I love that game. And all I would hear is just threatening kind of uh, cry you calls. Stupid talk. Yes, yeah. I love like, it. Ah, you killed me so many times. Okay, That's you killed great. me many times too. Wow, so you were probably in my dreams, in my head, because I played that game a lot when Good. it first came out. Yeah. Good, there's no escape. <laughs> I love that. Ginger Tosser. 
<clears throat> has written on Twitter and said, what's the weirdest thing you've woken up to after a night of drinking? Mine's waking up on a boat to France. <laughs> oh, shit. We've all been there. Wow. Wait, I, feel I like I've had something like Wait, that. Wait, ginger tosser. Does that mean you, like, you give gingers hand jobs or I thought a tosser throw... was like an idiot. Is that Wait, what it is? Wait, jog on your tosser? Yeah. Is that what that is? Yeah. That could be what it be. What well, do you think it is? Oh. It could be well, very... I thought there was like a toss to off. Like, get range. Oh, like blanket. they throw gingers. Yeah, actually, like okay, chucks gingers. I like that one more. What do redhead people ever do work. to him? What about you? Uh, weirdest place you woke up well, after Well, I have drinking. never been drunk in my entire life. Not once. And you live in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm kind of like a weird enigma that's, in Los Angeles, for sure. That's fascinating. It's a strange thing. Yeah, never ever been drunk. So I don't know. I don't know. I've okay. never even like woken up in a weird place. But I have had that thing where like you wake up when you've like when you're staying at a hotel or at a friend's house or something, and there's okay, that split okay. second where you're like, where, where the I? fuck am I? This right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is that. not my beautiful house. <laughs> this is not my beautiful wife. Is that topical? Is that uh, is that anywhere near what drunk people are like or being drunk is like? That second where you're like you don't know where you are. Uh, if that second was prolonged for about three minutes of, <sighs> why do people want that? Is my question. And then waking up and realizing that three minutes ended up being four hours that you can't yeah. explain. Nobody wants that. <laughs> yeah. The night before is what you want. Nobody wants the morning after. Mm. No one wakes up and goes like, oh, this is awesome. This is worth no, it. No, that doesn't happen. Yeah. Interesting. Um, oh man. I'll never understand that. I've, I've woken up in different rooms and you know forgotten I like, that, that I crashed at someone's house. And that was the thing. I've got I've gotten really trashed at a convention once that I was a guest at and uh, woke up on the floor face down of a hotel room. <laughs> woke up and had to introduce myself to whoever's room it was because they didn't know I was there and I didn't recognize them. Oh, shit. Oh. Had that brief conversation of like, hi, well thank you for letting me stay here, gonna, I guess. They're where like, are we? how did you get in here? I'm like, I don't know. Wait, I don't remember. Really? Yeah, I, I, there was about four hours I lost that night before, and then I go downstairs, and all my friends are like, "Hey, Matt, how you doing?" You know that look of like, "Oh no, that I'm, I'm missing time." And Wait, so did pictures. they know what happened, or have you been able to piece together how you ended up there? I don't know how I got there. I just know certain things happened throughout the evening, like they came back in flashes. It was like That's memento. So the worst but part is when you don't remember, and people have to explain what yeah. you did. I remember, I think I was like 19, and it was the work Christmas party, and the next morning I had to go into work, and everyone's just like, "I was like, what did I do?" Or you dance on the table and then you made out with Sarah's boyfriend? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Sarah! Oh, whoops. <laughs> Were you in trouble with her for a while? Uh, I think so. Yeah. 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 Apparently, we You just... weren't very good friends with her, it sounds like. I was. I don't know what that that whole thing. That was a long time ago. Ooh, yeah. and no, that's we're why good. I shouldn't, um, <laughs> you know, drink all night. That's a good plan. And not have water. Yeah. Hydrate. Oh yeah. I gotta drink water. I Stay think, hydrated. I think I ended up judging a lap dance contest at that that evening. <laughs> and you're like, tens. Yeah. Everywhere. How do you win a lap dance contest? You have to ask the guy who won. <laughs> His name's Trevor. <laughs> all right. Was uh, that like full release? I don't know. I don't. I don't remember it happening. I just there were uh, pictures afterward. Everyone's like, you did this. I'm like, okay, yeah. Go me. <laughs> oh yeah, future Maud always hates present drinking Maud. <laughs> I have to apologize to her. Yeah. Uh, slap, slap one face <laughs> uh, said, what is your favorite sad slash happy food? Ooh, ooh, Tim Tams, happy. You know that, and I tried to pass on the happiness with the biscuit, the chocolate cover biscuit. Stop saying no. Chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I, although biscuit here is like a fluffy, Savory, little salty, delicious, okay. hot little thing here. Mm, mm. I love hot little things. Who Whoa. doesn't? Yeah. Nice, not bad. So Tim Tams is this chocolate covered, I want to say biscuit, but it's like a cookie, but not. it's not a cookie at all. But okay. you, it, because it's encased in chocolate, if you bite the top and the bottom of it, it reveals the biscuit. And so you can drink like coffee or milk or anything through that. I tried red, red wine huh. on the weekend. What the fuck? I've been just to try it. Don't recommend it. <laughs> but at least I gave that a go. It's important to know. Not that I would try orange juice, but you know how chocolate and wine kind of taste nice together? Right, right. Well, I thought if I... Mm, no. Not so much? No. Okay, what the hell is sad food? When you're sad, you go oh, straight you to the ice cream sad? buckets. What do you do when you're sad? Ice cream, hands down. What kind of ice cream? Um, I just had a vanilla caramel swirl Ooh. gelati that I polished off in one night. Nice. Worth it. Um, but mm -hmm. I don't like chocolate. Like hmm. chocolate ice cream with chocolate chips is too much chocolate. It can be a little little much on that, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I I go to ice cream for sad food probably as well, um, but I choose. I found and this has been uh, changed everything for me. I guess in in Ralphs out here they have a a private selection uh, cherry and amaretto ice cream, that is amazing with little chocolate chips in it and it's yeah. just like an actual like little cherries and it's just amaretto Love flavor. Love it when they have the little cherry bits yeah. in there. That's always a nice. Who does treat. that one? 
Uh, it's like their private selection, like their Ralph specific. It's like I a think. Ralph's brand. Yeah, and it's just it's one of those where I'm like, I'll have a bite. Where'd it go? It's, it's empty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sad. I need more. Yeah. Uh, uh, I try that. I don't know what. I, I guess I'll eat like re- the worst of fast food when when I feel really What's sad. What's the worst of fast food? I don't know. Maybe like bad. maybe like um, what was that? Is it KFC that did the, that's the it. burger with chicken deep fried? Oh, that's not oh. even the worst. Oh, the, the bowl the is the worst. Oh, the bowl of history. Yeah, yeah. Is that what? <laughs> that's what we call it. The sedimentary layers. Of... Yeah, it's like corn, mashed potatoes, gravy, limestone, <laughs> Where dinosaurs, is it? Just... and then it's like cheese and then like chicken bits. Who yeah. does this? It's KFC. Oh. Pat Oswald has a super funny bit about it. <laughs> Just make me a fucking failure pile in a sadness bowl. That's what I want. And when I'm happy, I also eat real bad fast food. <laughs> so I don't know. What are you supposed? What are you supposed to eat when you're happy? Good food that's good I think for you. Because you're supposed to be too busy ha- uh, happy. I don't know if there's a happy. difference. It's all like the best food is always the worst for celebratory you. Celebratory food. Yeah. Meaning if you did something cool, like something really oh, great happened, celebrate. and you get your friends together to celebrate, where do you go to eat? Ice cream. <laughs> there you go. Pizza. Yeah, I don't know. It must be pizza. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For for me, it's uh, good Indian like chicken tikka masala with some garlic naan. Yeah. That's my like. Wow. Celebratory oh, I see. Like right some there. people will you get like a around, steak or something. You can't yeah. be around anyone for what four hours after eating that meal. Oh, I don't. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want to be around me. It's for I can you. be wherever I like. I'm celebrating and happy. Yeah. This is for you. This yeah. is your time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> You're up. Get oh, in there, baby boy. All right. What we got? We got. Your boy. Lee Bailey. Wow, it's evolving. Lee Majors. Yeah, it is evolving. All these like weird things we come up with all evolve into weirder shit. All right. This one looks long. Just some guy on Reddit uh, asks, if you had to choose a celebrity to be president, who would it be and why? Kate Blanchett. Okay, alive think... or dead or only alive? I'd, I'd... Oh, I'd say alive or dead for sure. Okay, it so doesn't any, celeb- doesn't, any, any celebrity ever to be president, who would it be and why? I think The Rock could be pretty good too. And when you make him angry, he turns into The Rock Obama. That would ruin him if he became the president. Would it? Yeah. Yeah, because so much shit would be blamed on him and like he wouldn't be able to fix everything and like people would just be mad at him. Yeah. It'd be real sad. It would, it would really dissolve all the stories of the films where he was able to solve everything. And he'd be <laughs> yeah, like, right? Man, this, this whole time. Like yeah. <laughs> I, uh, this is gonna get kind of real. Okay. I would like to give JFK a shot. Ooh. Like a, a big long shot. Maybe reword that. You'd like to give JFK <laughs> a, chance. a chance. Why would you want to reword that? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he I think he I'd like to give him a longer Inning. blast at it. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I think he would have a blast. And yeah. I uh I think I he would blow That'd us away. No, is it not? We can't. I mean, it's not. Was it too soon? soon or? <laughs> <laughs> you th- you think that he'd bring this country back to the left <laughs> side of the political <laughs> spectrum? Is that what you think? Ooh. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes! Can't be mad at that. Can't be mad at that. Wow. Yeah, I want him to have another chance. Okay. Cool. I can go with that. Yeah. That's what I want. Yeah. I wouldn't want to see that happen. All right. Uh, or like Morgan Freeman. Ooh. Because Morgan Freeman the same played. Thing. We all he think played he's a God. great. Played a great god. I think he'd be able yeah. to handle the presidency. It's, no, it's the same thing as the Rock syndrome. You'd think he'd be amazing, and then all of a sudden you're just disappointed. But I mean, like, I oh. feel like Morgan Freeman is so mature. He's in, a, he's in a different place than the Rock is. I like to imagine he wouldn't actually speak at the at the State of the Union. He would just narrate what he thinks should happen. And it <laughs> yeah. happens. Right now, I'm standing yeah. here wondering what to say. All the countries of the world came together, and all was peace and harmony. <laughs> Holy! How did he do that? And like, it just afraid. happens. That'd yeah. be amazing. Yeah, I'd be into it. There you go. I want that. I'd probably go, this is a little obscure, I'd probably go with Richard Feynman, who's my favorite. He was an astrophysicist, or a physicist. He was also like a brilliant, personable individual who had great philosophies on life, and... Uh, when was he around? Uh, he was around largely in the 60s, um, uh, late 50s, early 60s, and in some of the early 70s before he passed away, um, well, later on of cancer, but he was, he was just a brilliant mind, a very, very good person, and uh, just just from a, a general outlook on life and being intelligent, personable, and able to to facilitate conversation between opposing sides, I think he'd be a great choice. Oh, wow, that's, that's, that's a smart answer. The politics really go down when the debates come out, and it gets a bit nasty. Yeah, yeah. I think if we had about a thousand more of him in the world, life would be a little bit better. There we go. What if we could have like a Stephen Hawking as like the president, or like a Neil deGrasse Tyson as the president? You think that'd be very? I think they're a bit busy. Yeah, but I mean like. 
what if they were just like, give it a shot. Give it a shot. Let's see what it would be like. We had like a super smart scientist, someone who's very logical. Wouldn't that someone who's very science a majority minded. of the, the people of America? I mean, most presidents do, don't they? Don't they? There's, there's, there's some presidents that are just like way too into their own. It's a balance of skill sets for any sort of political position on that level Charisma. of power. Yeah. Intelligence. Neil deGrasse Tyson. The ability right there. To, to compromise in a way that facilitates the most positive universal outcome. Um, I love the I love in, in the engineer mindset, and I would always love to have somebody who has more of an engineering or science based mind. By all means, yep. um, and so in that case, I would I would lean more towards Neil deGrasse because he is also much more personable. He's yeah. a great public speaker, mm -hmm. and uh, he knows how to. I don't know. Stephen Hawking shreds on stage. He this sure does. Yeah. He really tears it up. Yeah. I think he's also very somber, though. His stuff is always very much like we're gonna die. Well, yeah. Stop making AI. Please. Yeah. Please. Or like, there's a comment that's gonna kill us all. There's no hope for humanity. We're all gonna die. And it's like, oh, thanks, man. Please nice exit. bedside manner you got In there, an buddy. Fashion. Uh, but I really love to see like I, Obama like cared about science yeah. a little bit. Oh, he's been tremendous in pushing that, which has been yeah. Good. I thought that was pretty cool. Went too fast. Uh, oh, speaking of oh, this is well, Scully for president. Wait, no. No. Wait, it, it's meant to happen. Let's just next that whole conversation. Scully. It Boom. should be Scully yeah. from X Files. Scully for president. <laughs> least favorite part of your favorite movie. The favorite part of your least favorite movie. Wait, what? What is the least favorite part of your favorite movie? Least favorite favorite part of your favorite movie. And then your favorite part of your least favorite movie. Wow, this is tough. This is I think like the a favorite part of the least favorite movie. I mean, because it's your least favorite movie, you can't offer any favor towards it. Is my favorite guess. So I'm going to focus on the first half of this question. Your favorite movie. Let's start with that. What is your favorite movie? My favorite movie Dumb is Planet Wars. of the Apes. Right. The original. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's a series of films, but still to this day, few films have affected me as much as the first Lord of the Rings trilogy. Oh, right. yeah. So the least favorite part of the trilogy. I can think of my least favorite part of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Like, I love the Lord of the Rings movies. Yeah. All of them. Uh, it's not It's not actually the multiple endings. I thought that was fine. I never yeah. had a problem with that. It's the dated special effects. It bothers me sometimes, mm. especially when you're like Gandalf's flying on the eagle at that one yeah. point. Well, at the time it was pretty intense. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. but, but no, it's like now it's like, ah. My, my least favorite part of my favorite movie is The Hobbit movies. How about that? Oh, my yeah, least favorite yeah, part of Lord of the Rings yeah, are The I Hobbit movies. I like The Hobbit movies, but I've got a soft spot for The <sighs> Hobbit. Been one. The story of The Hobbit is a very, uh, it's very near and dear to my heart. Uh, but yeah, and the extended editions of The Hobbit aren't bad, actually. I was just watching them recently. How can you extend something that's been extended, extended into so three much. movies? I mean, I know that Peter Jackson was just like, he came out recently and was like, I don't know what I was doing, I was tired, I was he forced was to do shit. So much cocaine. Yeah. The night before filming. Yeah, I mean, that's not unheard of in movies, yeah. unfortunately. But uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, he, I guess it's just one of those things where it was studio pressures and such. Yeah. If we'd had it our way, I think there wouldn't have been so many... Uh, there were, I guess the deadlines were just way too tight on those movies. Yeah. So they just had to like, and the go, studios go, go. are like, this is a money maker, so yeah. make it. Maybe right. it's Guillermo del Toro's fault because he like was supposed to direct it, and then at the well, last yeah. minute it was like, oh, I gotta do this. As um, it, whatever it takes to get him to do in the Mountains of Madness. I know, right? If it's ever matters, gonna fucking happen, it has to, it has or this like legit uh, haunted mansion movie, yeah. I want to see that real bad. Yeah, as long as I get Eddie Murphy back. That's all I'm <laughs> no! asking. No. <laughs> no. So no. what's your least favorite part of Planet of the Apes then? Um. I don't know. I can't think of my least favorite part. I love it. I love every part of it. It's maybe it's a little cheesy now. Mm -hmm. But that's not a fault of the movie. That's I mean, same with like the CGI yeah. and Lord of the Rings. I guess I don't know. It's a little. There's some cheesy parts. Least favorite part of Star Wars for me then. I never knew growing up because I I really latched onto the Ewoks. I thought they were great because I was a love, little girl. I still love the Ewoks. Girl. But what would it be like if they were on Kashyyyk and they were Wookiees instead of? Ewoks. Yeah, yeah. That could have been an epic battle, but I think the reason why they chose Ewoks is that these little cuddly teddy bears were the reason behind the destruction of the Empire. And I kind of think. I that guess that's... is that actually the reason? Do we know the real reason? Well, so far every time there's a little fuck up in Star Wars, someone's just like, "Well, actually, that was because." Nah. And they oh, make and do you know? Do you know? I wonder what the real reason for changing it to Ewoks oh. was. That was so, so close. So close. <laughs> 
of getting there. I wonder if it's actually just for like marketing purposes. That's what I was thinking. It's more yeah. just like, hey, the, all the toys are selling so but well. You the young like, kids, they want something adorable to play with. But yeah. you could make Wookiees adorable. You could have like young Wookiees and like baby Wookiees. Yeah, they tried stuff. that in the Christmas special. Well, been, that's we don't true. talk about the Christmas special. <laughs> so I want to sit down and watch mm. that at some point with you guys. Oh I think my it'd be god, so fun. I'll have to be drunk. Only, I would rather wake up and not remember that I'd oh, watch that. Only for the creepy like VR woman who's like, the grandpa watches porn. The grandpa Wookiee watches porn with their grandchild in the room. It's, it's beautiful. Just Last qu- tinges of middle America right there. No? Make it good. Last question. All right. All right. My mom uh, at Crystal Sol- Solace 93 says, do you have a name for your junk? <laughs> I mean, I... This question. I've been calling my junk something for a very long time. And I don't think I've ever revealed this. I call it my dick. And, uh, Richard or? Just a dick. Is it short it's my dick. It's not short for I call Richard. it my dick. You should just call it Richard. And my dick and balls is what I call it. You guys okay. are you familiar with those Do you terms? A, yeah, I'm about to drive over them. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's weird. It's weird to like have a name for your junk, isn't it? I think if it's like... You know, the Chad's coming. Yeah, if, yeah, if, it, if it's serious and you're like, no, legitimately earn the title, then yeah, that's weird. If it's like yeah. silly and playful, maybe it's fine. Yeah, all right. Depending I on who you're dating. I went through a phase. I think I was, a, you know, in the later years of high school and it was exciting to have private parts. Um, I liked to imagine that my vagina downstairs was Natalia, who was Russian. And you there had to you treat go. her very well. Natalia. To topple countries with the power was, of. The it, pussy. The pussy. It yes, reminds pussy. me of that. Thank you for finishing this. Yeah. I think because I watched, I played a lot of Goldeneye '64. Okay, oh, yeah. Natalia was in there, and I, I was thinking yeah. of. Yeah. For some reason, I thought of uh, Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull movie. That, bad, that <laughs> again, bad it comes back to Kate Blanchett. Kate I love Blanchett. her. Yeah. I love Kate. She's great. What Little a terrible Kate. movie, though. <laughs> No, I didn't blow on it. I just have a hair on my shirt. Okay. I, <laughs> I thought you were just like pulling her down a little bit, just making sure she's okay. Just smoking? You know, is it like a barrel of gun down there? That's her other name now. It's Kate, Kate Blanchett now. Yeah. That's your yeah. I'll Italia. meet her and I'll be like, hey, Kate. There you go. So, Kate, yeah. babe? Or is it CB? She will be a queen. Most beautiful and terrible. You sorry. have no power over me. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for joining us yeah. on this table talk. Wait, you didn't say your junk name. Oh, I didn't. Mm. Well, go on. I like to think that it has a name, but much like Voldemort, like it shouldn't be spoken. So I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's referred to with like proper nouns, like he, it, you know, but like we're always dancing around it, so, so it's never it like actually spoken. He who so must not be. Must be revealed, must revealed. be named, must be turned against, must be destroyed. The, like, you know, whatever you, must I, title not be you want destroyed. to add. That's great. You know, so, it's, so it, is, it shall remain a mystery uh, for the betterment of all humankind. What is the uh, the language on the ring? It's like the black tongue or something? Yeah, or, yeah. Uh, yeah, there you go. It can only black speech. Euphemism. Black speech, exactly. Yeah. Do not destroy the one. No, it's got a school to the yeah. so Oh, shit. That, that, really? Is for that reals? legit? I don't know, maybe. Cool. I can fake it well. Sounds awesome. Sure can. While we're on topic. Uh, but guys, listen, that's all the time we have for this table talk. Uh, dude, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you for having uh, us. You were a very awesome guest. An absolute pleasure, Seven guys. Seven o'clock uh, th- th- Thursdays, Critical Role, yeah. Twitch as well, and then you can catch it on the YouTube channel over Indeed. at Deacon Sundry. So give that a like and subscribe if you have not yet. What episode are you up to now? Uh, we're on to episode 46 this week, wow. which uh, our special guest this week is Chris Hardwick, actually. He's coming oh, wow. cool. week, so it'll be good. The nerdist man himself. Exactly. It'll That's cool. If you're going to watch it, get settled in. Uh, they go, their running time is what, usually four or five? Uh, between three think? and four hours average. Three and four hours. Yeah. Cool, man. Uh, wow. But if you have watched Dungeons and Dragons on SourceFed and you want to take the next step with your love of role playing and fantasy, definitely check out Critical Role. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, also, uh, where can people find you if they would like to talk further and stalk you on social media? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, at Matthew Mercer. That's where I'm probably the most uh, active. So find me on there, shoot me questions and such, or say hello. Very cool. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to submit some topics to the bowl, you can use the hashtag Table Talk on the Twitters, or you can go to reddit.com slash r slash sourcefed and post your topics there in the appropriate thread. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. Goodbye. The second item you're going to need is Diet Coke, which, girl, I know you've already got that ish in your fridge. Who wants to share Diet Coke with a superstar? <laughs> I was talking about myself. <laughs> the next item you're going to need, Mentos. The fresh maker. The next item you're going to need, coconut oil.